Hey, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for checking me out. And this is going to be a good one. I'm excited. I'm excited. But before we talk about um, power force, let's get into the pleasantries. I hope that you are doing well. I hope school, work, kids, everyone's doing good. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to just get into what I want to talk about today. And like I said, this is Power Book Force. Sorry for the gulp. I I had to get some tea, y'all, because this was so good. I'm so excited to talk about it. I know you guys are too. To be real, when Power, the original book ended, I was like, child, I only care about Tommy's storyline. Then they came out with Raising Canaan. And I was like, who cares about Canaan's story? That was good. Like, I underestimated that show. It was good. And then they were like, oh, well, we're going to tell Tariq's story next. And I was like, child, <laughs> y'all giving us filler, spin off after filler, spill off, spin off. And then the one with Tariq was good too. And I was like, you know what? Let me not underestimate the powers that be over at power because they do their damn thing and then tonight is what I was waiting for for what two years force now you know if you don't know already Tommy was my favorite character I feel like when you talk about power Tommy was the one from day one who showed you who he was he kept it straight no chasing the whole time and there were things I didn't agree with, but overall, character development, acting, writing for him is just perfect. So, Force. Now, it was a little bit of a slow start. I'm not going to lie. It was a little slow. I don't have much notes. But I am going to pull what I thought was important and what stood out to me. And then we're going to talk about it in the, in the comments. We're going to talk about it on social media. We're going to really, really dive into this one because this this season has so much potential I don't know I'm I'm getting excited okay so of course it starts off with the flashbacks now at first I was going to mention this because I'm like child we all saw the episode so why I talk about the flashbacks but the flashbacks reminded me how brutal Tommy is and the ebbs and woes ebbs and flows that's what it is the ebbs and flows of him as a character like, he really been through it. Like, really. Like, he's more than just somebody who killed. Like, he saw death. He did things because he had to survive. Like, I just really felt for him going through those flashbacks. Like, I forgot how much Holly meant to him. I forgot how much Keisha meant to him. And even Ghost. Like, even when he was holding Ghost, I was like, wow. I wish we would have got more of that. But, yeah, it was just a lot. But it was interesting to me that they did not highlight the fact that his that he killed his father um I thought that was a little weird because I thought that was an important shift in him as a character as well but we didn't see that but um so Tommy he's really going through it with these flashbacks and then he swerves and he has like a little mental breakdown for 2.5 and then he's like child we got to go get this money. <laughs> we got to go be a boss. So he turns and makes a um, detour to Chicago. So we already know um, when Power, the first book ended, we knew that he was going to California. So he's talking to um, the guy over the phone. I think his name was Randolph. And he's just like, yo, I'll get there when I get there. So when he said that, I was like, child, he ain't going there. Low-key, when he went to Chicago and I saw all the snow, because where I am, there's a lot of snow. And I was like, child, I don't want to be basically the same New York vibe. Like, I don't want it to be, like, cold, wearing coats, seeing a breath when they talking. Like, I didn't want all that. But they showed us very quickly, like, child, you're in Chicago. It's different. They care about parking. Even though when he was like, they care about parking, I guess, because I'm in New Jersey, I was kind of like, we hear about parking here too, but I guess in New York, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> but I was just like, yeah, people care about parking and all that. 
but they was taking it overboard over there in Chicago and I want to know if that's like how it really is <laughs> but so Tommy's there and instantly he's looking for this woman so it's this older woman um he thinks she's dead he brought flowers but no she had the old people home so he goes to see her she's basically out of it and he's like child I can't deal so Tommy does what Tommy does and he out there moving and shaking minding his business going to the bar flirting with creek girls and getting it in so that's Tommy then we get introduced to this new character. We really don't know his name. They call him D. And he is very, he, he's kind of fine. Okay. He is very attractive. And he's in jail or prison. Prison. He's in prison and he's cutting hair. And then we find out he's leaving. So some of the people in the jail, I mean, in the prison, they were like, we're going to make him get comfortable and then he's going to get got. But he doesn't really know that. But he, like, me mugged them because obviously they had beef. So he leaves. I'm in the impression that um when he leaves prison, he went in in 91. So as he's leaving the CO, they give him clippers because he was a barber. And then he gives them his J's, like his um his old J's or whatever. Because, you know, J's, they come back and they're retros and people spend all this money on them. So he just gave the CO it. I thought that was really cute. And then this guy comes to get him, and I didn't write down his name. Um, I'm really not good with names. <laughs> I'm really not good with names. If they don't say it enough, I'm not. it's not going to click with me. But we don't really know his name, but he calls him bro, and they just have an exchange, and they about to get right back into business. Then we're going to jump back to Tommy. So Tommy, of course, he's doing what he's doing. He go, he goes to the bar. He meets a cute girl after he gets him some. He just like, oh, well, did you enjoy your marriage? Blah, blah, blah. She's like, yeah, um, it didn't last long enough. But have you ever been married? And he was like, almost or whatever. So we moved past that. Before they got it in, um, he kind of had to run in with this group of people. And they're trying him. They're like, oh, so you're in our park, parking spot. Can you move? I'm not going to tell you again. Getting real ballsy with him. And I'm like, do y'all know who this is? And obviously they didn't. So the girl at the bar, who he got himself, who he got some with later in the night, she was just like, she deals with one of the guys. So the guy, his name is Vic, and his family are basically gangsters, and they run Chicago. So she's like, well, we can't work out, talking to Vic, we can't work out until you get your together and you stop playing these drug dealing games. But it's funny because she, she sleeps with Tommy, and I'm like, oh, girl, <laughs> you don't know what you got yourself into. Um, and... Vic is just like, I'm going to get myself together. And when I do, it's me and you. We're going to get it popping. So she kind of like, okay. And she still messes around with Tommy. And then, as I mentioned, they get it in. I mentioned it early because I felt like it happened pretty quick. <laughs> but, um, of course, Tommy, I think there's points in the episode where he's really like, y'all keep playing in my face. Like... I'm trying to get a feel for y'all out here. I'm not staying long and y'all playing with me. Like, I have to show you who I am. So Vic, when he was checking Tommy, he was with this guy, his brother, who's like a F up. And Tommy beats him up in the alleyway and he takes his phone. And he's like, oh, if they're this big gangster family and they have a connect, I, I want to know the connect. So he meets up with Vic because Vic thinks he's texting his brother. Tommy pulls up. He shoots at him. And he's like, take me to your connect. So they go. These two geeked up kids, they're like, where's my money? Run me my money. And Tommy's like, yo, like, y'all never did this before? And the kids are like, oh, we did this before. We did this before. But of course, they're geeked up. They're hype. They got guns in their hand. And then Vic, he's just like, oh, well, I came light. And Tommy's like, you came to a drug deal light? 
So obviously the people here are amateurs. And I think Tommy is starting to realize, yo, like if they playing like this, I could take over. Like I could be the boss. And we all know Tommy, he really wanted to be the boss, but goes wouldn't let up off of him. So Tommy's like, all right. So he handles the situation. He shoots and kills one of the guys. The other one leaves. Of course, you know, you have you always have to leave somebody to be the messenger to say, oh yeah, don't fuck with him. Um, so that that's he left one of the messengers. And Vic is like him and um the the guy who I mentioned um is like the other guy's brother. So the oh, sorry. So the one who came out in out of prison, the what he has a brother or someone he calls his brother. He was also at the meet. And he's like, yo, who is this crazy white guy doing all of this? And Tommy's like, well, basically, you don't need to know who I am, but I saved your life and I need my fee and I'm taking this money and I'm taking the drugs. And he goes on his merry little way. So there's also a section where we meet um, Vic's rest of his family. We meet his father. His father's just like, no nonsense everybody has their roles they need to play their roles in order for the family to thrive so the daughter claudia she's the bookkeeper and she keeps the family legit she used to be pretty and keep it legit but of course they always want to be in the streets they always think they could be a gangster everybody think they could be a gangster everybody think they can run shit until it comes to their doorstep so she's like she's into party drugs based on what we see she's into party drugs and she basically tests out the supply before she brings it to the family that's my that's what I'm getting from her Vic is um she's like I could do a better job than Vic and the father's like but what can you do with these little frail arms you're not throwing hands like sit down so she's just still trying to find her way in so we also we're gonna go back to um the barber um d and he is just like okay a lot of things have changed things have changed so much for him that he is sleeping on the floor instead of the bed like that's how how much time he did um we find out that he did 15 years so he's really like institutionalized you know so but it seems like he's trying to turn over a new leaf but it also like He has one foot in and one foot out. Like, he wants to be a barber. His homeboy was like, yo, I I made this for us. It's bought ownership. You don't have to worry about nothing. Like, you just need cut hair and you good. But while D seems like he's into that and he's so happy that he could just be a barber, there's little things that have me to believe that he's going to go back in. Like the cop who stopped to the barber shop, and he's just like trying him. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I know who you are. I'm a, I'm a step around here. And then when his homeboy was just kind of like, yo, Chicago really changed. These youngins, like, they're really different. We just out here doing what we need to do. And he's like, okay, but what about that white boy? Like, we need to check him. So. It's like he wants one foot out the door, but he's also in it because we don't know his motive yet, you know? So, so back to Tommy. Tommy is like, everybody's talking about this crazy white boy who thought he running stuff and we need to find out who he is. And so Vic's family, they find him and they box him up on the highway like he is the president. And they're like, okay, well, thank you for your help, but you need to get out of Chicago. Like, give me my money, give me my drugs. You need, you need to get out of, you need, you need to get out of here. And then Tommy's like, okay. So he goes to his car. He calls Rodolfo. He's like, I'm not coming to Cali. Like, I'm coming to, I'm staying to the shot. My thoughts on that are Tommy is going to stay in the shy because what another part I forgot to mention was he has a brother now so he finds out that he has a brother who's black (laughs) in Chicago 
and the brother was raised by his father they have um the same mother so he took his brother's number just in case there's something up with that brother I don't know what it is but there's something up with him and we need to keep an eye on him because I feel like he's he's there to cause mess and havoc and I'm not prepared okay but I think that's what's keeping Tommy in Chicago and I also think what's keeping Tommy Tommy in Chicago is they a bunch of punks over there because if anybody you don't know is able to say I'm taking your money and your drugs and when you're confronted by the head of the family he's like thank you but get out of Chicago he didn't shoot him he didn't do nothing I would have thought the same thing I would have been like well um I'm here to say like (laughs) y'all not about to do nothing like y'all y'all act a real real scared out here let me just make make my mark and I can run stuff and I think Tommy's gonna do just that I think my predictions for this season is Tommy's gonna run things I think he's gonna collaborate with the CBI boys um and I think they're gonna run stuff I think their issue is gonna be what Tommy's issue always is is his temper and and his drug use I think those are the two things that are going to be major issues for him this season. But with Tommy, anybody could get got. He don't think twice. He don't do all this emotional stuff. Anybody could get got, including that brother who I think is shady. So thank you guys for listening. (laughs) Um, Please leave comments. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it because I want to know what you thought was important in the episode and what little connections that you're making. Be sure to follow me. Be sure to leave comments and all that good jazz. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.